the morning as well. We are joined now by Christine Fair, who is a senior political scientist with the uh, Rand Corporation. Thanks for joining us. This no, thanks for having me this morning. This segment we're going to focus on um, India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot in the news with the attacks in Mumbai. The uh, international section of the New York Times this morning. Uh, headline says, India says Pakistanis carried out attacks that urges its neighbors to uh, take strong actions. What's giving India the sense that the Pakistanis are responsible for this? The identity of the lone attacker uh, who actually survived the assault. It looks as if the fellow uh, came from the Punjab uh, in Pakistan. According to him, all of the attackers, all 10 of them, were from Pakistan. They trained in Pakistan. They were given very clear directions um, about when they were to travel to Karachi, where they traveled to Mumbai by, by boat. They went on a, mer a merchant marine vessel. They actually hijacked an Indian uh, fishing trawler, where they beheaded uh, the, um, the, the head of that ship. And then they made their way to Bombay, and then they wreaked their havoc. Apparently, they, uh, in Pakistan, we're told to memorize Google Maps of the city. It's really quite extraordinary. I'm actually quite incredulous myself that 10 people from Pakistan, particularly with some of the educational backgrounds that we're told that these fellows have, were able to do this uh, simply by memorizing Google Maps. Um, the Indians say so far they found no evidence of any sort of local support. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really incredulous that 10 individuals who've never been in Bombay were able to execute the attack that they did. This group that uh, you said comes from Punjab, the Punjab area? Well, actually, their headquarters of Lashkar Taiba is in Murid K. Um, that's their headquarters. It's located outside of the large Punjabi city, Lahore. So it is very much a Punjabi group based in Pakistan. Do we know much about them beforehand? Oh, yeah. This group's been around for quite some time. Um, you know, it's interesting. When this attack first happened, I was incredibly dubious that it was Lashkar e Taiba. Lashkar e Taiba has. Um, never targeted Americans, and certainly not American citizens. Now, to be clear, Lashkar Taiba has been operating in Afghanistan for at least the last year where they've taken on U.S. and NATO forces. So it's not fair to say they haven't targeted Americans, but certainly not American citizens. And I've been collecting Lashkar Taiba publications, posters, and propaganda for quite some time. They've been heavily anti-Semitic, but never in all of their time, in all of their decade or more of operating in the subcontinent, they've never targeted a Jewish. Uh, institution, much less Jewish individuals. So the, this particular kind of attack, uh, I was quite skeptical at first, was in fact Lashkar Taiba. There was a news report that earlier this morning, I don't have it here, that indicated, seemed to indicate there was torture of some of the victims yes. at the Jewish center. What do you know of that? Well, I was talking to an Indian uh, colleague of mine who, who covers this quite extensively. He had actually heard that there was even rape, uh, that some of the victims had been raped. Um, again, all of this was really quite surprising. This um, is a level of of savagery that I mean, Lashkar Taiba is most definitely one of the most savage and capable militant groups operating in South Asia. But this attack really pushes the envelope even for Lashkar Taiba. What makes Lashkar, uh, the other reason why I was skeptical at first, was that many of the militant groups operating in Pakistan, and there are dozens of them, I mean, there's no paucity of, of militant groups operating in and from Pakistan. But Lashkar Taiba hasn't had any sort of leadership fractures. They haven't targeted the Pakistani state. And many of us who follow terrorism in South Asia believe that they're the closest to the ISI. So when and the you, ISI is what? Uh, Pakistan's external intelligence agency. Okay. That most of the militant groups operating in South Asia, they didn't just grow up um, sui generis. Um, in fact, the ISI cultivated them uh, to project Pakistani's interests uh, in India, Kashmir, and in Afghanistan. So when, when it became evident that this was a Lashkar Taiba attack, very real questions arise about what was the coordination uh, with the ISI in the execution of this attack. And that's why U.S.-Pakistan relations immediately come into focus uh, in the background of this attack. A the ABC's Brian Ross reported uh, yesterday that the U.S. warned India in October of a potential terror attack. His report said since Friday, U.S. intelligence agencies have been tracking the phones and SIM cards recovered by the Indian authorities from Mumbai, the terrorists there, leading to a treasure trove of leads in Pakistan, several possible connections to the United States. This group, uh, Lashkar Taiba, Lashkar -Taiba. Uh, they, do they have connections in the U.S.? Well, there have been some really interesting reports of people who claim to be Lashkar. So actually here in Virginia, we had a, a Lashkar paintball cell. Um, those individuals were apparently <coughs> training uh, paintball to, you know, in preparation for some terrorist operation. They were a very interesting mix of folks. Um, 
a number of Asian Americans, um, not necessarily Pakistani Americans. Um, I think as, as time went on, people became fairly convinced that they weren't truly Lushkar Atayaba cells. There were um, a couple of notable Australians who were associated with Lushkar, and the Australians have been worried about Lushkar for quite some time. The problem is that if you're, if you're interested in becoming a terrorist and you live outside of Pakistan and you want to obtain training to become a terrorist, there are very few countries where you can go and get this kind of training. Pakistan remains one of those countries, and Lushkar Taiba remains one of those groups offering this kind of training. Christine Fair is our guest till 9 o'clock this morning talking about India Pakistan relations. Your phone call is welcome, 202 737 0001 for Democrats, 202 737 0002 for, uh, for uh, Democrats, rather, and for independents and all others, 202 628 0205. First to Long Branch in uh, New Jersey on our Democrats line. Hi. Good morning. How are both of you this morning? Hi, thanks. I get emails from uh, Kevin Barrett. Uh, he ran for Congress out in Wisconsin, I believe, and uh, he's a 9-11 truth teller as well. And he, I, I, apparently the Israeli Mossad had a lot to do with this attack in India. I don't know why everybody keeps pointing at Pakistan for everything, but you know, I think some of us are a little tired of being lied to, A, by the politicians, and B, by your media. But what do you know about this Mossad thing? I, I have it right here by Amaresh Misra, uh, Mumbai, the uh, Mossad angle. We'll get an answer, Long Branch. Thank you. Well, I mean, this is the first time I've heard this. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I doubt the necessarily the credibility of this. Um, there are a number of individuals uh, that I've spoken to who are very well placed and knowledgeable about uh, Lashkar Taiba. Um, and the evidence does seem to be pointing very much in their direction. You know, I, I, I was very skeptical at first, as I said, that Lushker did this because um, the way in which it was reported, initially it didn't look like stuff that Lushker would do. Lushker, for example, had never done hostage taking. It turns out this wasn't a hostage standoff at all. Most of the people were killed when the, when the gunmen entered the building. And in fact, the gunmen were holed up, and it wasn't a hostage situation at all. But this does resemble many other attacks that Lushker has perpetrated in Indian administered Kashmir and in other part, parts of India. And the evidence pointing back to Pakistan does look pretty compelling. Now one could certainly discount the testimony of this 19 year old lone survivor um, and the conditions under which he gave that testimony, but there's a lot of other corroborating information coming from Indian as well as American sources that, that really does put the finger at Lushkar Taiba. And this is not um, something that's beyond their capability. Lushkar is one of the most capable militant groups in South Asia. On the diplomatic front, uh, the Financial Times reports this morning about the trip of Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Uh, Rice urges Islamabad to root out extremists. She has um, got this visit to India and to uh, Pakistan preparing for a hastily arranged visit to India tomorrow. Ms. Rice said that the U.S. urged India to give a, a controlled response to the atrocity. She said New Delhi must concentrate on getting the, uh, the, biggest le the highest levels of cooperation from law enforcement and intelligence agencies in Pakistan uh, rather than relying on a military uh, response there. Are they getting that? Is India getting that uh, response? Initially there was a report that uh, Pakistan's highest intelligence officer was going to come and then didn't come. Well, I mean, a couple of things are really laid bare by the last couple of days of Indo-Pakistan exchange. First, India really wants to be seen as a responsible nuclear power. Um, it recently uh, secured and went through the final uh, approvals to the IAEA, the NSG, and the Zanger Group, um, basically the, the Indo-U.S. civilian nuclear deal. So India really wants to see itself, and it wants to be seen as others, as a responsible nuclear power of global uh, you know, who operates on a global stage. It doesn't want to be a regional muckracker. Um, so India, at the apex levels of leadership, wants to handle this in a responsible way. The fact is that the evidence links the attackers to Lashkar Taiba. There is not evidence at this juncture that links Lashkar Taiba to the ISI and to the actual Pakistan government. So a military response with this level of evidence is hardly justifiable, and it's probably not in India's interest. It's also not in our interest to have India mobilize a military response because as soon as India mobilizes along the Pakistan border, the Pakistani armed forces are going to move their forces, which are currently arrayed along the Afghan border, towards the India border. And this is what happened in 2001 when Pakistan-based militants attacked the Indian parliament. India readied for war. 
Pakistan moved its troops from the west to the east, and that's when al-Qaeda and the Taliban were able to easily infiltrate into Pakistan's tribal areas. So the U.S. is very keen that this not take on a military dimension because it would give the Pakistanis an excuse to mobilize from the west to the east. Let's go to Boise. Boise, Idaho, good morning on our independence line. Hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, question for your guest. Uh, shouldn't we with our own economic problems, focus on a primarily diplomatic role instead of providing material support? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by providing material support. Can you elaborate what you have in mind? I'm sorry, he's off the line. So. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you mean by providing military support, uh, uh, material support. What we're actually encouraging the Indians to do is to focus their attentions on securing maximal cooperation from the Pakistanis. Now, I will say all of this has a familiar ring of Groundhog Day. Um, there are a number of attacks that have occurred episodically uh, in India that have had footprints in some way or another in Pakistan. Uh, don't forget, just a few years ago, there was another attack in Bombay targeting Bombay subway. Pakistan promised that they would cooperate. They, they promised that they were going to forge a joint t terrorism investigatory task force. That really only happened in name. Um, the Pakistani uh, government, the civilian leadership, did promise to send the leader of the ISI to India to investigate, but he was uh, forced almost immediately to renege from that offer. And it, that, I think, really underscores the fact that the civilians are not in control of the military and the intelligence apparatus. That was simply not his promise to offer. So my understanding is that that's exactly what the United States is doing. It's important, though, for the Secretary of State to go to India, uh, both to show... Um, the recognition that Americans were, for the first time, singled out in a terrorist attack in India. But also, India is the United States' new and important ally in the region. It's also important that she go to Pakistan and deliver a very firm message that the time to clamp down on these militant groups has long passed. Um, it, it's really quite amazing to me um, that we are only now being outraged by Lashkar -e Taiba. I mean, they've been targeting our troops in Afghanistan now for at least a year. So the time for outrage has, has really uh, long since passed. It's time for action. When did um, Bombay become Mumbai? Um, boy, actually, I don't know the exact year. You know, India has been slowly going through this process of of Indianizing names of cities that right. had previously <clears throat> been given British names. So the most recent one was Bangalore, which has become Bangalore. Uh, previous to that, um, I think it happened sometime around the 90s. I've been calling it Mumbai for quite some time. Uh, I think it happened in the 90s. What's the role of the uh, Kashmir region? Is, is there any indication that uh, this attack was over that? Well, Pakistan uh, and those who sort of want to rationalize the, the, the savagery of this attack are going to point to Kashmir. Now, most of the militant groups that are, uh, per well, Islamist militant groups that are operating in India and in Kashmir were raised by Pakistan's ISI for precisely that reason. Pakistan can't take Kashmir by force. Uh, politically, diplomatically, very few uh, nations actually take Pakistan's side um, of, of this issue. So militant groups have long been the tool through which Pakistan has tried to wrest Kashmir away from India. So Kashmir in its in, in this sense, was the, the catalyst for forming many of these militant groups. But I've long you know, argued that Kashmir is important because Kashmir is the source of Pakistan's insecurity. The anxiety over Kashmir, in some sense, uh, drives Pakistan to do what it does. But I would also argue in the recent decades, Pakistan's insecurity vis-a-vis -vis India has really transcended beyond Kashmir, almost to the point that even if you were to resolve the territorial dispute that is Kashmir, we would still have an Indo-Pakistan security competition. Christine Fair is with us. She is a senior political scientist with the RAND Corporation, graduate of the University of Chicago, or Bachelor of Science in uh, Chemistry, Biological yeah. Chemistry, <laughs> Master's in Public Policy, and your doctorate in Southeastern Languages, so Southeast a Asian language. Uh, so which, which languages do you speak in? Uh, Hindi, Punjabi, and Urdu is my strongest. Punjabi and Urdu is my strongest. I speak a, I, I speak a passable Farsi. I can ask where I'm going in Afghanistan. So you read many of the source publications in their original language? or? Well, I used to. I don't so much now because it's actually fairly time intensive, um, which is regrettable because my, my reading ability has really lapsed. But, um, you, know, I, you know, when I need to, I can go to some of the source. I mean, I've collected a lot of Lushkar Taiba propaganda, and um, that's all, of course, in Urdu. We're talking about uh, the Mumbai attacks and India-Pakistan relations. Annapolis is next. Good morning on our uh, Democrats, uh, our Republican line. Yes, Sam. Uh, you mentioned several times that your original 
perception of Lushker Tiber uh, was uh, incorrect, but you haven't elaborated at all. I believe you've mentioned one time in the entire 15 minutes that you've been on uh, the international Islamic problems that are uh, fomenting, fomenting throughout the entire world. Uh, why don't you give a little bit more of a an overview? of uh, how this group relates to the problems of an international nature that you have not yet commented on. Well, there's a reason why I haven't commented upon it, because Lashkar Taiba, in its origins, was not really part of this global jihadi landscape that some people point to. In its origins, it was very local. Um, in its operations, it was very local. So, I, as I said, I've been collecting Lashkar Taiba propaganda uh, really since I was a student in 1995. And when you look at their posters, their posters will, will frequently speak to international conflict. So, for example, I have one poster that juxtaposes um, Israel-Palestine with Kashmir with a big jihadi sword. And you know it's a jihadi sword because it's embellished with, with various Quranic inscriptions. And the hand is wearing the camouflage that you might associate with the mujahid. And the, the poetry that decorates the poster really links the Kashmir conflict with the Israel conflict.